So I'm ready to install the priming bar now. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna clean this fluff off. It's not doing too much damage there. And yeah, that was bender. One thing I notice here with this new bar is if you look here. Now I'm really picky about tolerances. It's one of the things that really pisses me off when they're not right. Is that if I push that there, that's requiring quite a lot more pressure to stay in place. Uh, and you have to push down on the bolt sled as well then to get the bolt sled to lock over into place and to slide this. So you're kind of putting, you are putting a bit more along with this priming bar, you are putting a little bit more pressure on the bolt sled here. So it'll be interesting to see how well that works in conjunction with the bigger spring. Now I know that makes me sound like a right anal git, but I am really picky about tolerances. It's one of the things that I think makes a really good mod, is if it's better than factory tolerance, then you know you're onto something decent and you haven't got a crap mod. Now here's another interesting area for failure. Well, we're looking. We can investigate the condition here of this little sucker, which is the dart door. Mm. Let's just have a look at this one. Yeah, it's still okay. Where they fail is they break around here. This little folding piece breaks off. That's often an indicator of the timing issue that I've talked about before on the EAT, where um, this, the tooth here, what happens is the bolt sled comes forward and it pushes the tooth down and that allows, you can see here, that allows this door to, to close and if the tooth's up, the door doesn't shut. So some EATs need a little addition to the ramp here and the, what that does is it makes this go down a little bit sooner and it means the dart head isn't pushing against this whilst that's shut. And what you want to avoid is you want to push the dart into the bolt to get a nice tight dart seal, but what you don't want is you don't want the dart to be ramming into the dart gate here and pushing up against the hinge. And what happens then is your dart folds partially at the head and it also can break this. Catch spring. And then I don't put the main springs in at the beginning. I add the main springs after. So I think it's stupid to add the main spring when you want to shut the shell. So catch in. Right, mustn't forget the stupid dart thing. And reset the mag release spring, which always moves out of alignment for some reason whenever you open the shell. Check the alignment of the slam fire spring and the trigger spring. Right, that's now ready to be closed back up again. And there's still plenty of lube on the moving parts and I've just added a little bit onto the other one. So, now what we do is we can put the 8 kg spring into the ass end, like that, and just feel that, just feel a little bit, let's feel the two together. Just by hand feel, and I'm not bad at this kind of stuff, that does feel slightly, slightly stiffer. And Orange Modworks do underrate their spring, their 5k is much nearer 7kg. You can expect some proper data on that shortly because we've got, we've got a spring, spring force measuring device and we will be using that shortly. So, let's see how well this shell goes together now, given that we've got a little bit of an alignment problem caused by that new priming bar. Now remember, you shouldn't have to force the shell in any way, it should just slip together. So what we do when we do the Alpha Trooper, you can see I've left the spring sticking out and I just put a four end screw in, quickly put a couple of four end screws in just to hold it in place. And then what you can do is you can just slip this last bit of spring inside the shell. And because your four ends all tightened up, it should hold all your components aligned when you do it. So you see that's now all that nice and tight, all aligned properly. So I'm just going to do up the shell screws and then the spring guide she goes inside here. So that fits in there and it fits beveled edge out and all it does is it just makes sure that the plunger tube, sorry the plunger stays aligned inside the um, cap. So just bear that in mind that's where that goes. Hi, it's Tom here from FDS, and we are going straight to the test segment for the Blaster Parts Hard Range Kit for the Elite Alpha Trooper. And as it's a commercial test, brand new Elite darts, and uh, I've got to say thank you to Thomas Olstad, and um, there's one other contributor on Patreon, 
um, and if they come through they'll be credited at the bottom of the video thank you for sponsoring my testing and um, you're buying my darts and uh, also thank you very much to UK Nerf War um, for the kit and uh, if you're in the UK and you want to get your blasters modified he is there and there's a link to his site in the description box and also his site is my agent for commissioning blasters from me so after all the commercial crap is out of the way let's see how she goes over the chrono I've got high hopes for this kit it's a nice spring it's well engineered let's see how she shoots Okay, it'll be a 50 dart shoot again. Okay, uh, review of the data for the blaster parts. 8 kg um, kit for the Elite Alpha Trooper. And we have a high of 85, low of 63, average of 75, extreme spread of 22, standard deviation of 7%.